favorite single ball as metaphors describe life. My favorite single ball is, is heart. It's like sound of the You know, it's like the wind and the rain makes it warm. You can feel the moisture and the force of the wind blowing. Simultaneously, all at once. So when I'm playing bold notes F, it's like that. You know, you get to the point where I can feel myself standing in a, on a rock, a big rock, or in a clearing, or on a balcony, or on a roof, and I can feel the rain, the wind. It's there, but it's not there. So it's like the sound of wind. Presence in the nothingness of the now. Yeah. What was your initial attraction to vibrational healing practices? First reaction was I went to sleep. I mean, that was the first thing. I, I'll say it this way the bowls were being played, and it was my first encounter. And I was in a space, a large space. Uh, and I was in one end of it, and the bowls were at the other end, and they were being played. And I heard them. I didn't make any association one way or the other, <laughs> but I could also was feel attracted to them. Right. S- s- attracted, but put at a distance. It's almost like the, the, the more I, the continuous I heard it, it seemed like the further away they got. Like a ripple in a pond. Yeah, and, 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 and to, to the degree that four hours later, I, I woke up. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, and and so that was my first <laughs> encounter was the fact that it was, it appeared to be far away when it was close. It appeared to be close when it was far away. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. What is the perfect union of sound, thought, and color? Light. Light. Expound on that. Well, you said sound, thought, thought, and thought. And thought. It's like a good sexual fantasy. (laughs) (laughs) Rose, cover your ears. You know, you 
you's a Christian girl, cover your ears. You don't know about what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it, when you when you put it like thought, sound, and color. It's like what? what huh? Thought. Thought. Like thinking your thoughts. Sound. Like speaking sound or the bowls and color. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you think. Think a thought, hear the thought, and see the color of the thought. What would that look like? What does what does red sound like? The color red sound. Like? I mean, that's that's it. whatever your answer is. Is your answer is no wrong answer. If we don't ever think about it that way. Yeah. Right? You think about it, you hear a sound, and in your mind you see the color red because you thought. Yeah. Or oh, that was a thought that came to you was a color red when you heard that sound. Right. You know? So yeah. what? That's what Miles says, so what? Yeah. <laughs> Give us a breakdown of singing bowls, their history and vibrational purposes. History of vibrational purpose. In the beginning was vibration. What was the other person? Uh, uh, the breakdown of singing bowls, their history, their history and vibration. Their history. Well, somehow, somewhere, the Creator touched a human vessel or a vessel, and in that vessel, it gave them some. Inquisitive feelings or emotions or thoughts about what it might sound like if I hit a rock. And maybe they didn't just a thud, but then they, they felt the vibration that they created when they hit the rock. So you had a thud and you had a vibration. Now this was new phenomenon because remember they were walking around, but the creator just happened this particular day. Touch me and say, hit that rock, see what it feel like. Well, the rock can't feel, so what did you feel when you hit the rock? You felt the vibration. So let's start there. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, then you, you come along, you know, and everything you touch or hit it has, it has a vibration. And a tone. Right. So somewhere along the line, the creator hit somebody and said, okay, call that vibration this and give it this numerical value. And with that numerical value, give it this, this, this. No. No. And then give it what happens when you hear this note and feel this note. Okay. Dealing you know, with the chakras and stuff. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess yeah. they took two twigs and then became drumsticks, right? That's it. You're right. Somebody, right. you know, they, right. I mean, you think about it. You think about, you think about our melanated ancestors. Yeah. Our Africans, Kemites, Kushites. Yeah, yeah. Kemites. Uh, uh, key, uh, the uh, key, uh, you think, you think, you the whole NASA land was a oh, key belong. Yeah. And you think about how they could send the message about a wedding from one <laughs> side of the picture <laughs> to the other with drums. With sound and vibration. Yeah. And in the sound and vibration, they got like the communication. Come on now. And they send the message and back. Send the message back. And thus Moore's core. Cold was right, 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 <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Um, right. Know that's where it came from. You know it. You know it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. See what I'm saying? That's all right. You can feel the light. Now, if you have a slow, you know, you know, yeah. You know, 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 you Okay, yeah. you got how many girls coming? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Right. How many guys? How many right. guys? Right. <laughs> how many that don't know? Okay. Right. <laughs> right. What's your favorite song? The 
one is I can't move out of my head as hard as I try because it doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything that we're talking about, but then yes, it does. Temptation made a song called You're Gonna Lose a Precious Love. Mm. There's a line in that song, is the ad lib, where David sings, The touch of my hand should let you know how much I love you. Yeah. Mm. That's deep. So, so when I think about touch and the vibration of the touch and the message and the vibration of the touch. Yeah. And the body is so the soul transfused. Right. Mm -hmm. Transference. But just the touch of my hand, but I'll be saying anything, should let you know. Mm. How much I, I love, love you, you. Mm -hmm. and if you leave, you lose a <coughs> precious love, you will lose. <laughs> <laughs> the touch of my hand should let you know. Yeah, that one. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. I know you did. Over there at Central High School, sash head up and down the hall. We're talking about you're going to lose precious love. <laughs> since, we, since we're indulging in the victuals here, yeah. does food, spiritual, physical, and creative inspire? <laughs> does food, spiritual, physical, and creative yeah. inspire? Absolutely. How so? Yeah. We get the feeling of the flavor. Mm. That's interesting because oftentimes most folks, I will say nowadays, eat out of stress, you know, just out of habit. They just want, I just want to have something. That just, it don't even have to be real. It can just taste like what I thought it was supposed to taste like. Yeah. And I'm happy. So I mean, it's an emotional thing sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and the thing about it is, is that in the process of, of creating, uh, creating, I mean, like this brother is an artist when it comes to, I mean, he's an artist, period. But what I mean, I said, as we all are, we all yeah. are artists and creators. So you yeah. think about it, you get deep off into whatever your project is, and somewhere in there, there's going to, something's going to come to mind that you want to eat. You know, I can, it might be something just, yeah. Ain't nobody said nothing about no nothing, yeah. but but you deep you into tap whatever into you, a vibration, and then that vibration equates itself with the physical form, activates. and it activates you yeah. into something. Right. And when you when you think of or partake in a particular food, it grounds you in that frequency. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because think about it. I mean, it's 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 how we say, man. I was just thinking, I, I, I had a taste for Yeah. You know, not only do you, you can, you, you taste it, you smell it, you see it, mm -hmm. you know, you can, I mean, you experiencing right. it, that. Right. You know, and again, as you say, in, in, in the midst of creating whatever, while you into that, I mean, it's, the, the, the channels are open. And usually, if, if whatever it is you happen to be thinking about eating, it, it's probably nourishing you from the soul of it so because when you finally get there that's why you go crazy when you go out you're going to get in the place is closed yeah you know, and then, yeah. You know so, so, so then eating then becomes a spiritual mechanism it should be it, it, it means, yeah it's spiritual yeah, yeah. i mean because yeah, well, i mean it has to be crystallized in the invisible to create a desire yes before you your brain thought first even, you, you when know, first you. thought form matter Come on, and right then uh, you know first right thought up. form matter mm -hmm. first thought uh, converge spirit to form matter right. Right. and then the matter turns into a creative when you're cooking you're cooking you're putting the spices or whatever in there that's the creativity and then the inspiration is the taste yeah. and what it does to you yeah. And how you make you feel, make you feel good and nourished and all of that. It, it touches all of all of your senses. You know, it's just like when I think about Austin, I think about going home, right? And I think about when I was a little boy, I would be walking down Chicago 
heading towards 12th Street, where they call it the end. That's where all your black businesses and you know my Domino House and all of that. The, 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 the only cab, all the cab company, everything was right there. And I can recall walking down Chicago, the most dirt sidewalks, <clears throat> and I guess it must be what 12th, 14th Street. There's a hot sausage place where they barbecuing, so you can smell. Mm -hmm. The aroma, the spices, yeah. Yeah. you know, as you're walking. And it was an experience. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that, hey, man, I, <laughs> uh, me and my, 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 my father had been, you know, we, we hadn't been together. Like, we knew we talked, but, but we hadn't been. And, and I had an experience uh, uh, here. I was asking myself the question. You know, you have have some of the doors I talk about when you go back through those doors of your of your consciousness and yeah. your life and, and you think about things in those in those doors so you open the door and this particular door is you and your father you know that and you know I ask myself well what did I do you know to deserve you know you what, what, <laughs> you, yeah, what, what, what did I, you know, you yeah, right. I said, you know, I, I just want a hug, right? Yeah. And you know, hey man. So when we finally face to face, arm to arm, and you know how you had him, you know, where was you at in my life? Them kind of conversation. Yeah. You, you was a dead, deadbeat, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, so in, in that moment, all I could say was, you know, if it happened five minutes ago, that's history. Yeah. That was five minutes ago. Yeah. So the only thing that matters is what right now. This breath I'm in right now. That's so only right. thing I want from you right now is a hug and take me down to Sam's on 12th Street and give me some hot socks. <laughs> I know that's good. right. I know that's right. Right, right. I mean, right. I mean, I, hey, I mean, because tell you, but I had a good life, bro. I had love. I had, I had everything I needed, wanted, and desired, and more. Right. So I ain't got. I can't hold your feet to the fire for something I didn't miss. Right. You missed. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't miss. Right. You missed. Right. <laughs> Show me that you like me. Give me one of them sausages. Right, I know <laughs> that's, that's right. You have to do. That's right. Give me, give me a heartfelt hug, and take me, give me yes, some hot sausages. We straight, we straight. And later on, because we had never really sat down at the table since 1966, and actually broke bread. We said he said, you know, he was cooking some salmon. You know, he turned me on the salmon. He put you a little horseradish, and I, you know, I said, oh, this is tangy. You know? So he said, he said, I'm gonna tell you, I really appreciate. Your perspective on life as it pertains to me and you. I really appreciate how you uh, see your life. Meaning, as I said, five minutes ago, Doc, it's gone. That's history. Yeah. If I'm still five minutes in, I tell you, I'm late. Right. I'm late for tomorrow. Right. <laughs> I, I, and I'm not even in now. Right. I'm five minutes ago, so I ain't sitting here, I'm there. Right. So whatever's happening here, I missed. Right. So I told him, no, I got nah. Give me a hug. Take right. me out. Give me some hot sauce. I want them in the bag. You know, I had them wrapping that red paper. Right. 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 When I got to Waco, or better yet, when I got to Colleen, where Fort Hood is, I would begin to smell the cedar trees. I could stand anywhere. And when I think about that, I can smell those cedar trees. There's something about the air there that, you know, like people say, well, I, you know, I, I had back surgery. I was supposed to be in bed laying down. I told my mama, I'm on some high sides. I'm going right now. The people told you the guy said, I'm, I, I might not ever walk again. I'm going to get me some hot sausage. Mm -hmm. So I got in the car, put my son and my nephew in the car, and drove 19 straight hours. The only time I stopped was to use the bathroom and get me some coffee. Wow. I drove, and, and I didn't stop until I was in front of Sam's on 12th Street, wow. <laughs> waiting for him to open. Wow. I get me some hot sausage. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's wow. deep, bro. Wow. That's wow. deep. Yeah. So. That's an experience right there in and of itself. But that. You talk about the, the thought, the color, the sound, smell, 
you know, I, as I said, I was down when I went down this last time with my mom's, they put my mom's stone in. I was standing, it rained. Every day I was there, I mean, it was torrential. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to go to the grave site because, like I said, they had just put my mom's headstone in. You know, I, eventually it stopped and I did get to go. But that particular day, I was standing on the balcony. And it was raining, and again, I'm in Austin. And so, when you, I'll say it this way. So I'm looking at wind blow, rain, and I'm looking at these weeping willow trees and different equipment, right? And I'm standing there, and it hit me. All the people that I can recall there are all buried. I was feeling the raindrops and I said, every one of these raindrops is one of them. Mm. Mm. So I just stood there in the rain, man, and just soaked it up. Yeah. Wow. That's deep, man. I mean, you go to a place, man, and, uh, where you used to, whenever you go there, you could go north, south, east, or west, and there's somebody there. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody to pick you up, somebody. Yeah, and, and you get there and you say, <laughs> I don't have nobody to call. Mm. You know, who do I, who do I call? Mm. I mean, and this is a place where everybody, the, your, the center of your world yeah. was there. And you go there and it's like they've changed everything. And everybody that was anybody, basically to you, ain't there. Mm. They, I mean, they, they're in the sword, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's like, and that was an interesting feeling when I got out at the airport. And I'm saying, I'm looking around like, damn, this is an interesting situation. I've never had that where I had to figure out how I was going to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. right. and, and, and so again, uh, you know, I get a torch beer. Yeah, you know, I'm the, I'm the one that has whatever history is left. Uh, I'll segue, segue that question into you know what you're saying there uh what do you cherish most about your parents either or or both Basically, in Austin, knew who I was. I might not have known nothing about them, but they did. Oh, that's Dorothy Nell's boy, and that's Clinton's boy. So they knew my because they all everybody went to the same high school. You know, I say I had cousins. I didn't know nothing about it, so I couldn't anything that I did. Trust me, somebody was gonna tell me. So. So. My mom was a musician. She played the xylophone and the piano. And my dad was a musician. He played the tuba in the marching band. And my mom was a fashionista in her own right. And being an only child, she had to create Okay, all right. All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. I just have to get a nap to pick it up. What happened? Thank you, see, I oh. dropped. 
single mom at 17 uh, and being the only child she sort of made her world of make believe real okay. you know uh, she would sit at the table kitchen table and play the piano right okay. and from her playing the piano on the table. Her parents, my grandparents, watched her. So they sent her to uh, get, take piano lessons. And she was laughing, had me laughing. She was saying that the piano instructor wasn't in the room, so she had been playing. And the lady came out and So they said, oh no, don't stop playing that boogie boogie you was just playing. So, <laughs> but she was doing this practicing on a piano at home, but when she went to take classes, she didn't have a piano, so one day she came home. And my grandma said, oh, my God, this is And so, again, this is a, an only child, right? Uh, so a lot of the conversations she would have That's who she would talk. She would talk to the little girl in the car. Yeah, you know, like that conversation we was having with that podcast, dude. I thought about some of the things my mom would share. She would say, like, all of them sisters, all them women, you know, on the block. The husband will leave out in the morning, all of them going to work, they walk to get on the bus, they go to work. As soon as them Negroes round the corner, all them sisters come out the house. They all come and congregate to my grandmother's house. She's over there washing clothes with white folks. And they're sitting over there talking about them low down men they got, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of them got their beans on, but they all sitting there complaining about their husbands. Whatever. Now my grandmother, <laughs> my grandfather just went and built her a brand new house. I went and took pictures of it when I was there. I said, the house is still there. And she said she would watch and listen to them talk about them men, but now my grandmother's the only one who had the new house. And my mother said she sat there and watched them going back and forth with all that gossip and talk to my grandmother right out of that new house. Again, you know how you get to talk about your husband here, your husband that. So she said to herself, I'm not going to do that. She talked to the little girl inside of the car. Okay. See, we ain't, you're not going to do that. You're not. And so she would have these conversations about you know, little ears. In, uh -huh. in the room, yeah. before she up under the table, she listening and watching and seeing all the different things going on. So then she would go and talk to the little girl in the car. So see, you see what happened? So uh -huh. we ain't gonna do that. And so from that spiritual place that she was already in as a little girl, when I came along, she was shared up with me. You know, she gave me some some antidotes that I proudly. Uh, Regurgitate or repeat, if you will, because Antidotes. they they are gems for everybody. Oh yeah, Antidotes. they come through the bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's so my sense of style. She didn't necessarily tell me a certain way to dress. She just dressed me a certain way, and. So there were certain things that had to be in place for me to feel correct going out of the house. Mm -hmm. My shoes had to be shiny. Now, mind you, I had uncles and I had grandfathers. I didn't have a man, per se, in the house. Oh, but the women in there would say, oh, Hair was always combed.
I spent a lot of time alone because I had army men. I had I was drawing something. I was yeah. master the yeah, art of being alone. Yeah, yeah, man. I had a foot, red and white football, red helmet, white stripes down. I had the shoulder pads. I throw the ball up as high as I could. And I run. I catch it. I throw that hundred touchdowns. I scored a touchdown every time. I picked every tree out, the bush out. <laughs> By myself. Yeah. Had a good time. Yeah. You know. And so that was never an issue of being just me. Because from the stories that they would read me at night, you know, I knew about Achilles and the Odyssey and the Odysseys, you know, Leonidas. And, and I mean, those are the stories that my, they were reading me when I was growing up. So when I get my little army, man, I fought the Trojan War and the Trojans War. Right. Because I like their colors. Man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mean, so, I mean, I was digging trenches so they could leave me alone for hours. Never had to worry about me because I was in a whole other spot, you know. Uh, so, I appreciate my mother because she gave me a feminine side to appreciate. You know, uh, balance. Yeah, she gave me a balance. And she did try to tell me what a man would do. She told me what a man, what a woman would do. And if you're a man, don't let her do it. You know what I mean? So she didn't try to taint me one way. Matter she of fact, she you up on game. Yeah, she didn't bother to take the time to tell me how whatever my dad was to her or not. She just told me, you keep living, you'll see for yourself. Because if I tell you my side and they tell you their side is different from what I say, you got to figure out which one of these folks is lying. That leaves you confused. You ain't got to be confused. Are you love? Yes, ma'am. Is there anything that you need more than desire that you haven't had or you can't get? No, ma'am. Are you happy? Are you pleased? Can I? But then you don't need to hear any of that. That's right. That's beautiful, bro. So it's like with my ex-wife. I have no need to sit and talk negatively about my ex-wife. She's not here. She can't tell you her side. So my side to me is, is imbalanced. You need to have a balance so you can better understand both people. So That's a good way to look at that. I think I'm going to adopt that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to adopt that. That's, that. that's something good to do. Yeah. Instead of you know talking about what didn't work, just talk about the blessing of happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Balance is yes. So I could I could flow in myself because I had that balance. Now, as she once told me again, son, I knew you knew what to do because I, I knew you knew because we talked about it. So I knew you knew what to do. I just didn't know you didn't know how to do it. I could sit there all day long and tell Z about what I saw and when the man would do this and do that and then he said, okay, well, go ahead. And I go and I pick up and I, and I start looking around and I said, now damn, I, I seen it. Now where do I start? Mm-hmm. You know, well, bro, I, I, well, I knew, obviously you knew what to do, right. but I didn't know you didn't know how to do it. So let me show you. Right, right. right. And so that stayed with me because I said, hmm. So when you hold people to a, 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 a particular situation, you don't know, you heard them. Oh, it sounds real good in theory, but can you do it? And she also told me there's a there's a myriad of ways to do the same thing. So don't ever think that your way is the only way. In fact, if you be still and observe, you might find several different ways. Most of them might be better than the way you thought. So I had a chance to not have to Myself to somebody else and their method because their method is right for them. Right. Well, I'm and right if, and if it looks like if there's something that I it makes me feel good in my spirit, you can and incorporate I it. it and I can, yeah, and thank them. Yeah. You know, uh, so that was my mom.
was him, uh, how should I say, the, the, uh, his, his placeholder. But I wanted a motorcycle jacket, and I said, I want a motorcycle jacket. I asked my dad, my motorcycle, my grandmother got the motorcycle jacket. So I had the James Dean motorcycle jacket. All right, like I said, it's just me. Sport, I don't know nothing about that. I just noticed that. But <laughs> you, got, you got what you need. I asked, and I didn't get nobody no problem. Mm. You know, I didn't, you know. So what I'm saying is, is that so, so when I look at my, my biological father, my love for literature, for history, probably some other attributes that I have from him that I don't necessarily recognize. Somebody else who knew him that knew me would have to tell me that. You know what I mean? Well, I have to say maybe his, his, his stubbornness Bring it back to reality. Right. So why are you trying to? Right. You can't do that. Right. You right. fight yourself. Yeah, yeah you fight yourself. You fight yourself. Yeah, yeah. you do know. You fight yourself. Right. You you ain't gonna win this. <laughs> right. And I'm not trying to win it because right. I already know. Mm. I just want you to know. That's you like, do know who this is, right? That's like how me and my pops had a discussion one time. I was telling him it was right before he passed, a little, a little while before he passed. I said, "Well, you know," and he was a a minister, a preacher, a pastor. I said, well, you know, Pops, I said, there are other dimensions. I said, and uh, it's not more, there's more than just here. I said, you go to other dimensions when you leave here. And just before he passed, he came to me and he said, you know what, you're right. I said, you're absolutely right. How was he? He was, he was 84. And see, that's, if, if, they, if you're there, long enough in their presence over the years you'll see that as information is passed back and forth how something that you said here you really didn't see any evidence of it resonating in, in and around where you, you spread it yeah. until later on yeah. you know in very just one of them kind of moments yeah. where somebody says you know what I never forgot what you said I never forgot what you did. I never forgot. I, you know, I, I, in other words, it made one of what they call it indelible yeah. impressions upon yeah. your life. So, um, I got a lot from my father. I just don't know what all of it is. Yeah. I'm still experiencing it. It's all in you and it's you know, coming out. You know, uh, <coughs> and, it, and it's, it's interesting how people come into your space, come into your, or you walk into theirs. Your spaces intercourse, integrate, you know, intersect at points in time. And something will be said, a question will be asked, and it's a universal question that is coming mm -hmm. at this point in time, in this moment in time, from here. And it makes me Pause. Take a look at and ask the question: Why not? And why him? Or why her? Mm -hmm. Just and maybe not in those specifics, yeah, yeah, yeah. but right, but right. but, it, but in, in right. just in the, in the right. essence of it all, the compassion of the random right. abstract. Mm -hmm. Right, because if if you have any understanding at all, you know everything is purposed. Indeed, it was pre ordained. You might be early or late, but it, it's, it's on time. Indeed. And so at this point in time, that is being asked, or that's being said. Now, if you live long enough to have some wisdom, you 
pause and give it the necessary attention. That's and the check us. If you, yeah. It's to recognize. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, some people recognize certain things earlier yeah. based on their set of circumstances and right. conditions. Some people, but still, whatever time it is, that's the right time. Yeah. 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 So you know what time it is? Yeah. I, yeah. I do. For me? Yeah. 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 So it's so. And my my stepdad, I just call him my father because that's who. who yeah. Who did his best to give me his best? You know, I, I could truthfully say he's one of the best human beings I ever knew. Okay, he did That's a lot. right by my mother. Right, he did right by me. And I saw him; he did right by all that he could. I never saw him go out of his way to do wrong to anybody. And I, the only thing I would say, if there was any kind of fault, he was Leo, and he had a hard time being wrong. <laughs> it just he just uh, he would mm, hey blue is that a muffin yeah yeah uh dad that's a muffin okay rather than say that's a muffin we say no that ain't a muffin that's a cookie mm, okay you know what I mean? Some, I, mean I mean I simplified it but really yeah, it, would, yeah, it, it, it would get like that yeah, ask he, question. he would have to yeah. define it yeah, for he himself. would send me out to go and do a, do a proposal and give a give a bid yeah, for a job because you know, he had a janitorial service and I go and give, give the bid he would come in undercut it fear to me the bid that you that he, that you the bid that I gave he said he thought that might be oh okay it so was too high okay. so he wanted to make sure he got it so he come in I said so you gonna work us like Hebrew slaves for damn near free huh? but then why did you send me right right you know what I'm saying but then you have to look at the context. This is a man from Detroit whose father was a factory worker. His mother was a schemer and a manipulator, you know, you know, a crook. He went to Persian high school. He left out of Persian high school, he went to the factory. He left out of the factory, he went to the army. So all of those skills that a lot of other folks had, he didn't necessarily get. He wasn't a dumb man by any stretch. But some of them didn't. I was brother Percy, Percy Red, and I'm more like his brother, and I was like him in terms of how I carried myself. You know, I fingernails, polish, and shit. I'm, you know, I'm suited and booted, and that's Percy. Ladies, man. Fake it till you make it. Might not have a quarter in your pocket, but, but have on a thousand dollar suit. You ain't got but a dollar in your pocket. You can get your 10, 15 from your boy, because you just, hey man, give me some. You shot, bro. Huh? Yeah, you need some money. You so shot. <laughs> You see, you can get something you don't look yeah. like you need it. Yeah. want to give you something. Yeah. Just so he can say he gave you something. Yeah. So, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Fred wasn't like that. You know, Fred was about hey, if you're a husband, you got these responsibilities. If you're a father, you got these responsibilities. You know, this is what you got to do. This is what a man is expected to do. He never filled out a credit application. My mom filled out. Job. He said he, he said he wanted his own business. My mom found it in the paper. She's sitting there reading the newspaper. But she was sitting with her feet crossed like this. And she's sitting there because she's always got her nose in something, reading something. Scorpio, you know. He said, Freddie Jean, you said you want a business. I got you one right here. Jesus 
to us, young people. He came in, black as these glasses right here, sharp as a tack. But what made him so attractive and so powerful was his, his command of the English language. Okay. And his knowledge of the meaning of words. Okay. And the association of words and language with numbers. Okay. Okay. And so consequently, his ability to He's a real G. Yeah. Straight up. Straight up. Straight G. up G. He be one to tell you. You don't owe anybody an explanation for you. Don't explain yourself. You don't have to. You don't have to get naked for anybody. They don't have. I mean, you, you, there's no. You don't have any. You, you didn't ask permission to come here. Right. And who you gonna? I mean, if you ain't gonna ask the creator to create you to come here, you, you gonna ask? You gonna? You know, the rest of these folks is. Right. See, you don't, you, don't, you don't. You want to be understood, which is why you express yourself the way that you do. But you don't have to explain. Yourself, anyway, and so you know that, along with learning some of what he had in terms of, of being able to to give a tale or to tell a tale or instruction or information in as many different ways as the people you're talking to, because you understand one thing I'm saying one way and. Th and, and, and again, they all have an understanding of what I'm saying, but it's three different understandings, yeah. you know. And, and and so, but but as long as they understood you for what it is you're saying to them, you know. And I've, oftentimes, what I said to you, I didn't say to you because I tell people all the time, it's not what you say, it's what you didn't say. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so, I look at those, and again, even we want to come back and talk about playing bowls or what you do as an artist, your poetry, your art, all of those different things, you know, we sometimes ask a question for, look for an answer for a question that don't need to be asked. I don't have to ask a question about I am that I am. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Having said that, I, that's a perfect segue to the next question. What do you like most about yourself speaking as a union or a singularity? You know, you and as far as you and your wife, mm -hmm. or a singularity is just yourself. I like the fact that I can feel in my heart, from my very being, in my mental, I can feel the world around me. I can feel and appreciate sorrow. Lugubrious sorrow or melancholy or sorrow, sadness. sorrow in, in, in all of its forms. Sometimes, you know, I'll come to tears because I'm just so grateful. Okay. Tears is joy. Sometimes I come to tears because I feel I, I realize what that thing or that person meant to me. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's just a situation I look at it and I understand that, that this, this, I don't have any other way to feel about it but that. So, and I, I strive to be a better creator in everything that I do or think or say. I like that I am that way. Um, I like the fact that I really do care about your feelings. I really do appreciate your viewpoint. Uh, I like that about me, that I am grown and, and was yeah, and was taught compassion to yeah to appreciate to observe the surroundings and not only yourself but the other people that you're surrounded by. Empathy, right? Yeah, you know, and that is as as a as a union as well, 
And what I like about us as a union is that our differences, such as they are, makes us stronger. And like a power coupling, put them together and power up. My wife, queen, friend, lover, all of the things that she could be as the way she's created has given all of that and gives me all of that. I should say indeed because indeed means continuously. Yes, sir. And I know she loves who I am. And she's built and lives her life that way. And forces me, not that it has to be, to give always that second thought when temptation comes this way, as it always does. Yeah, as a man, it always will. Always does. But I always have to ask the question, no matter what it looks like, what it might smell like, what it might, whatever, it's never going to be as total as what I already have. Amen, brother. Amen. So why take what might not even be, it ain't meant for you, right. and spoil all of what has been invested in you. That's right. Unconditionally. That's right. So if there's ever an argument about to do or not to do, I always lose. Yeah. And I'm happy about it. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that, brother. I heard so, that. You know, as a union, I'm finding that all the impossible is possible. That's what's up. Last question I'm going to ask you. If you were about to go before every child from every generation to speak, what would you share with them? To live out your imaginations to the fullest. And all, and all of what you do, imagine. Imagination, mind of man is the mouth of God. Imagine what you will and you have what you imagine. Yeah. I will tell them, in all that you do, imagine. Uh, thank you very much, brother. That wasn't so bad. Nah, that wasn't. <laughs> That's good.